It's a big question, a lot of answers. It could be the poems in your computer that your parents find that eventually make them cry. It could be the plant that you kept alive in your room for 20 years. Maybe it's the, the Polaroids you have on your wall with your friends. We want to be remembered well. We're human. We want our successors to look at a picture of us and smile, maybe cry a little, think, wow, I wish they were here. So how do we control the uncontrollable? How do we control our legacy? I'm going to tell you the story of a man named Oscar Wilde. You may know him as a poet. I know him much more. In the 1800s, there was no keeping up with the Kardashians for people to obsess over. So the celebrities of the time were the nobility, the lords, the kings, the poets. Oscar Wilde was a poet. In 1890, his first novel, The Picture of Dorian Gray, was released, and the LGBTQ plus underground of Victorian London went berserk. They thought, wow, this man sees me. He understands. So there was a migration to London to meet him. And one of those men that came to meet him was Bosey, also known as Lord Arthur Douglas. And as a 21-year-old Oxford student, meeting a 37-year-old husband and father, it was scandalous. They quickly became lovers. And as their relationship developed, Bosey's father discovered it, Lord John Douglas. So, I know as parents, I'm sure you've disapproved of your children's relationships, but this guy takes it to another level. Unrelated, but we'll see. John Douglas's other son, his eldest, Bosie's older brother, Francis Douglas. Let's just say he had a bit of an affair as well. But instead of a poet, he chose the prime minister. Archibald Primrose, because isn't that a thing? Well, as they were having their little affair and Archibald was in office, John Douglas discovered it. He beat Francis until he was nearly dead, and a week later, Francis was found dead in the woods in a hunting accident that was, by most people, ruled a suicide. Keep this in mind moving forward, because there's scandal now, there's scandal then. As, uh, as Oscar Wilde created his poems and plays, one of them, the Importance of Being Earnest, which is still studied to this day, was released in 1895. On the opening night, John Douglas, Bosey's father, showed up screaming, raving, causing all kinds of chaos, and the hundreds of upper-class England uh, nobility that were there heard the cries that said, Oscar Wilde is a sodomite, a gay man, a criminal, and we should outlaw him. The trial that ensued destroyed Oscar Wilde from head to toe. His relationship with Bosey was exposed. Oscar Wilde tried to sue for, uh, for defamation, but, well, if you know anything about defamation, it doesn't work if the claims are true. So, as the trial went to stand, love letters between, between the two were released, and he's humiliated. I think it couldn't get worse. It did. Weeks later, John Douglas decided to take his little scandal he figured out to the next level. He blackmailed the prime minister into convicting Oscar Wilde because family drama, right? Oscar Wilde decided this isn't that great. Maybe we should avoid this. His friends tried to make him flee. He said to stay, stand his ground. London is his home. And in that trial, dozens of his past relationships, hookups, and sex workers that he hired were brought to the stand and testified against him. It was the most humiliating moment he's ever had. He was sentenced to two years of hard labor and charged with all 25 counts, and on an entire note, exiled from England. Wilde's legacy is remembered because of his time as a poet, as a playwright, as an author, as a creator, as an inspirational figure. When I talk to most people, they think, yeah, that's the guy I studied back in college, right? 
the one with weird poems that only half the class understood. Although the importance of being earnest is often learned by non-English speakers because of its rhetoric. So how did Oscar Wilde, a father, a husband, a son, a gay man, and a convicted criminal, be remembered as none other than success? In my mind, there are two types of legacies. There's familial and external. Familial, the kind moments between, behind closed doors, the personality you present to your friends and family, the kind of moments that you look back on when you hear a certain song play on the radio and think, that was a good night. The external legacy is what Oscar Wilde wanted, to be remembered on a widespread scale, to be implemented in the history books and written forever, written in stone. Some say that there are two types of deaths. The first, and not to beat a dead horse, but this is an awful analogy. The first is when your physical body dies, your heart stops pumping, your blood drains out. And the second is when your name, the one you put on tests and quizzes and W4s and your car registrations, is uttered for the very last time. What do you do when that happens? Oscar Wilde and his poetry, Princess Diana and her revolt against the British monarchy, Steve Jobs and Apple, their second lives are gonna last seemingly forever. In fact, we still talk about figures like that. Cleopatra is still remembered. So what do you do when you wanna value that second life? Or what if you just value the first? There's no right answer, but it is something to consider. As I talked with this presentation to my peers, a decent amount of them just laughed in my face. They said, why should I care? My legacy, that's a long time away. I won't die till I'm 150. Maybe I've got rabies, a couple cases of cancer, the usual. One of my good friends said she wanted a 24 karat gold statue on front lawn. I think that'd be pretty great. So why exactly do kids my age think that their lives are infinite? Why? As somebody that, and not many teens can say this, I've seen a decent amount of death. I've seen people on the brink of it, I've seen people pass that virtue, and I've seen the outcomes and the people that it impacts. There seems to be a neglect of, on that idea, the very idea that those around you could leave you, or you yourself could die. So as I finish this presentation, I want you to imagine this. You drive home, and you're expecting to go to bed and make a cup of tea, watch a bit of your favorite show with whoever's in your family, maybe cuddle with your cat and dog. But on the way home, you die. Whether it's a car crash, a UFO abduction, I think your boy's like, What happens after that? What happens once you're gone and you can't say what you want to be remembered for? What are the conversations that are going to happen between your family and friends and the media? Will they show up at your doorstep the next day and think, why were they dead and what will they leave behind? Are your friends going to bring casseroles to your family? Will your cat be fed? It's something to consider whether it's physical or whether it's spiritual, it's worth thinking about. Whether you're two years old, maybe not two, I'm not sure if you can think besides toys. Whether you're young, old, or like most of us, somewhere in between. Thank you.